G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Mags and welcome aboard my latest rocket. This is the MCMS, the MUN Communications and Scanning Satellite. Over the next few KSP videos I'm going to be trying to speed my space program up a little bit because I've done quite a lot of MUN and MINMUS exploration in previous videos that I've covered on the game and I want to expand out beyond that so at this point I have three, almost four missions planned that I want to achieve. The first is going to be the establishment of a manned colony on the surface of the MUN. But to do that, there's a couple of things that I want in place. First, I want reliable communications to the surface at all times, or as close to all times as is possible. And I want to have a really good map of the surface of the MUN so I can plan my exploration out. And that is what this launch is about. The MCMS's mission goal is to get into orbit of the MUN. From there, it will deploy a scanning array and begin to map the surface of the MUN in order to provide the mapping that I need. So I'm going to need to put it in on about a 45 degree inclination for starters and make sure that there is enough fuel in the module to be able to adjust my orbit as is necessary to complete the mapping uh, around the poles in the long run. And as you can see, I'm using the reusable launch vehicle that I designed in the previous episode. However, this time I am going to try and recover the core stage and get it to drop back down into the planet. It's uh, equipped with four parachutes. Theoretically, it should have everything that it needs to be able to survive. However, it is going to be dropping back into the atmosphere from space on a suborbital trajectory, and it does not have any guidance. So 50-50, it may make it back, or the central stage may be destroyed. Regardless, the main boosters have already been saved and have managed to get me, you know, 20 grand on my launch vehicle back in the bank. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, the second part of this mission is communications. The satellite itself is equipped with a medium range antenna, and this is actually twofold. The first part is to provide communications to the surface of the MUN whenever it is within line of sight of wherever the base will be, which it should do perfectly fine. The second part is to act as a relay satellite for my potential second and third missions. The second and third mission that I have planned won't actually be for a couple of episodes. I've got to wait for a window of opportunity to come up. I'm going to send unmanned probes to Eve and Duna, which is the KSP analogs for those who don't follow the game, for Venus and Mars. I already have a preliminary design for the unmanned probe ready to go, but the first window of opportunity for a transfer to EVE comes up in 160 days from the current day in-game, and the first opportunity for an efficient transfer to DUNA is not available until 280 days from the current day. So I have a bit of build time to work in between and some science together to improve the design for launch, but the design itself seems to be fairly solid. It's not mobile at this point, it is just a lander with an extremely wide base, but it should be able to do the job just fine. Now the last thing I'm planning to do is something that I haven't actually done in KSP in an incredibly long time and I've never put on channel before. I'm going to start building a space station. Now I do need to get some science back from the MUN first in order to be able to get the final parts that I need, specifically docking collars, to be able to actually put it together. But the plan is to put together a small refueling station in orbit. In future, what I will be doing or at least what I plan to be doing, is to keep a transfer vehicle fueled at the space station for all trips in between Kerbin, the Mun, and Minmus, so between Kerbin and its two moons. The idea will be to have the main manned capsule rendezvous with the space station in orbit, transfer over to the transfer vehicle, or attach to the transfer vehicle, and then have the transfer vehicle complete the pass through to the Mun or Minmus, detach the landing module, the Kerbins will go to the surface. When they return, they will redock with the transfer module, return to the space station where the transfer module will be redocked to be refueled, and the return vehicle will then make its trip back to the planet. A little bit more convoluted, but the idea is I'm trying to minimize the amount of stuff that I actually have to take out to decrease the cost of each step of the space program. It works well in theory. Whether or not it's going to be practical in the long run, we'll have to find out. At the very least, if it turns out not to be, I'm going to have a space station in orbit, and you guys are going to get to watch me build it, so that should be fine. So, with the communication and scanning features of the satellite now tested, just to make sure that they're all working perfectly fine, it's time to spin ourselves around and begin our burn for the month. 
Now I'm not doing anything particularly impressive from this launch, it's just going to be a standard MUN intercept that you've seen me do several times in the past. Once I achieve my encounter with the MUN, I'm going to do a second burn that will not only circularize, but will give me that 45 degree inclination that will maximize the amount of area that the scan sat is going to actually be able to cover in order to map the surface. And from there, I'm just going to leave the satellite in orbit. There's nothing else to do with it. It will just scan away every time it completes an orbit covering a new section until eventually it has the bulk of the MUN scanned. Once that's done, I will need to log back into the satellite and change its orbit slightly into something more polar in order to be able to get the rest of the surface scanned out. I may even need to increase its orbital altitude just a little bit so I don't have to put it on a full polar orbit in order to be able to complete, but that will take days at the very least. Fairly fuel efficient satellite this one. If I decided to, I should almost have enough fuel left over to be able to potentially transfer from the MUN to Minmus in order to scan there. I would need to replace the communication satellite of course, but it is an option if I choose to use it. Anyway, with our transfer burn complete, our satellite is now on its way to the MUN. So, how about we go check out what Jebediah is up to. And so we return to the MUN, Jebediah Kerman of course being the first Kerbal in this playthrough to actually land on his very first mission to the surface, and unfortunately we're in the process of having to bail off the surface. So, for those of you who are unaware, I am using a life support mod that gives a limited amount of time that a Kerbal can actually stay in space due to the limited number of supplies that he has available. Now I planned this mission with Jeb staying on the surface of the MUN for a fairly large amount of time. I actually planned out for 27 days, of which he's only been there for 7. So supply wise we're perfectly fine, however supplies are more than just the food and water that a Kerbal carries with them in order to be able to live, it's also oxygen regeneration and the all the other wonderful things that a person, any life form needs to actually survive in space. Now of course these systems require power. When I originally landed Jebediah on the MUN, I landed in a nice bright well lit area where the solar panels would be able to get excellent amount of power and would be able to last for any substantial period of time. However, that section of the MUN has now shifted away from the sun. There is no longer any light there and the ship itself does not have any form of generator of its own. It's completely reliant on its battery backups and its solar power, excluding of course the power generated by running its own engine. Now, the battery backups have about 6 hours per battery, 2 batteries on board, so you've got about half a day's worth of power inside of the module itself. Not enough to get through until sunrise on the MUN in that section again, so the mission is having to be aborted early. Honestly, I'm not too worried about this. This is exactly the reason why I actually like to have a life support module mod activated in my Kerbal Space Program lineup. This is a problem that somebody playing vanilla KSP would never have to worry about. If the sun goes down, it just means the systems in your ship won't work until it rotates back around and comes back up, but your Kerbals are in no risk of dying. In my game, they are. It also forces you to have to optimize your launches and your transfers because, well, you can't leave your Kerbal in space for a hundred years to find the exact optimal window for a minimum fuel burn or a minimum delta V burn in order to bring yourself back to the surface of Kerbin. You only have X amount of life support, so anything that you do has to happen within the period of time that you have available based on your life support. The same goes with planning long range missions much further down the track when you have access to higher technology and you're planning on going places like the Joule system for example, the KSP analogue to Jupiter. This is a fantastic mission to be able to take, but the solar panels work based on range to the sun, and the further away you get from the sun, the less power they will actually generate, so you will need to remember how much power your life support system is going to need to run as a base, how much power you need to run your ship, and make sure that there are generators appropriate to be able to supply what you need in the off chance that the sun just isn't doing it for you anymore. It's actually part of the reason why I'm doing this burn here. This is not an efficient burn, but the orbit that I left the MUN on, because I left in a little bit of a rush, was going to put me at, well, an extremely long distance from Kerbin. By the time I would have made it to my apoapsis or periapsis in order to be able to change that orbit, the optimal and most efficient point to change the orbit, 
I would have already burnt through so much of my life support that I would never have been able to survive the return trip. So I'm having to burn now, and I'm going to be a little bit creative with the burn. For those of you who are paying attention to, you may see that I'm actually playing these slightly out of order, as my satellite is already in orbit of the Moon. So anyways, what I'm doing with this particular burn is getting a little bit of a gravity assist from the Moon in order to throw me back towards Kerbin saves me a little bit on fuel because as you can see I am running a little bit low I was planning on leaving the Mun with well a little bit more time to plan out an efficient return but I've had to leave in a little bit of a rush now my initial thought was to get to my periapsis here and then burn as hard as I could to drop my apoapsis into the Kerbin atmosphere but it's just I'm not gonna have enough fuel to be able to do it but I do have enough life support on this new orbit to be able to make it back around to the apoapsis, and it's only going to toss me about 75 delta V to shift the periapsis just into the upper atmosphere where I can start an error braking maneuver, which works perfectly fine. There's just one small catch to this particular orbit. If I don't successfully error brake and I leave the atmosphere still under speed, I will not have the fuel to be able to arrest my orbit and bring myself back and the orbit just happens to coincide with the position of the MUN, so I'm going to slam into the MUN at about 2 kilometers per second. So back to the MCMS and a little bit back in the past, and we're currently planning out our maneuver burn to insert the MCMS into lunar orbit at a 45 degree or approximate 45 degree inclination. For the most part, I am just eyeballing this particular maneuver. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough that the ScanSat is going to have the maximum amount of terrain to cover as it completes its orbits around the Moon. The burn time in this maneuver is only 28 seconds, so it is relatively small. I've got still a half a tank of fuel left in the spacecraft, so I have plenty of fuel for this. As I said, I will have enough that if I chose to, I could actually leave lunar orbit and slingshot around to Minmus and actually start a scan there at a later time, if necessary. Last few seconds left to go and shut down the engines. We got a little bit of extra left to burn, so we'll just give it a couple of small pulses. And perfect, there we go. And that should do just nicely. So all that's left to do at this point in time is to deploy the antennas and deploy the ScanSat. Unfortunately, this all happens to be on the dark side, but we can turn on the lights. Not that they are particularly bright. I'm going to have to fit brighter lights to all of my future spacecraft. ScanSat is deployed. The antenna is already out. And there we go. We can see the scan path indicated on the surface of the Mun right there. So, basically what happens here is as the Mun rotates around Kerbin, the satellite also rotates around the Mun and each orbital pass that the satellite makes, it's going to have an entirely new set of terrain to scan as it goes through. After a certain number of orbits, it will scan every single piece of terrain that is within its current range, at which point I will need to adjust the orbit slightly, change the inclination, in order to be able to pick up the polar points, which will leave me with an extremely detailed map of the surface of the Moon to plan all of my future missions on. And we shut down the engine, and that's the end of this flight. However, before we go, it's always worth to make sure that the satellite is actually scanning correctly, and you can see in the top right-hand corner of the planetary mapping box, you can see the position of the satellite, and you can see it's scanning on its way through. I accidentally turned the antenna on and off, which is why there's a scan period just slightly before. Anyways, that's that one done. It will just do its thing, and in the space of the next mm, month or so in-game, it will map out the entirety of the Mun, and I'll be able to use that information to plan future missions. Anyways, let's go back to Jeb. So having just completed our burn at Apoapsis, we now have our encounter with Kerbin's upper atmosphere. We still have a little bit of fuel left in the tank at this point. It was only a 75 meter per second burn, so we have around a couple of hundred meters left in the tank. Not much, but enough that we can do a deceleration burn while we're in the middle of aero braking before we release the main engine mod module, just to try and slow us down a little bit, because we really do not want to leave that atmosphere. The Mun is there to catch us, and it is not looking pretty. But of course, we're not quite done with Jeb's little issue just quite yet. Because I had to leave the Mun in a rush and then was working out how to try and 
adjust my burns from a rather unoptimal return to one that will actually get me back to the surface of the planet, I realize in the very last seconds as I'm on the final approach to the error breaking that I forgot to collect the science from the science experiments that are currently sitting underneath the command module. So we're currently plummeting towards the planet at 2,925 meters per second. I'm going to hit three kilometers per second before we hit atmosphere. And I'm going to have to do an EVA in order to collect the science experiments before I can actually begin the aero braking. 167,000 meters above the surface and dropping, and right now Jebediah is going to be hating my ass for making him do this. Still, we do manage to successfully collect all of the experiments and get back into the spacecraft, although we made it slightly harder on ourselves as we nudged the spacecraft while it was in freefall, because, you know, it's so much more fun to try and grab onto the surface of a spacecraft that's in an uncontrolled rotation while it's plummeting towards a planet at 3 kilometers per second. But that is no reason not to take an EVA report before getting on board. So, with that little oops dealt with, we are now 128,000 meters and falling from the surface. The atmosphere starts at 70,000 of course, so we're just about getting ready. It's time to align the spacecraft. We need to make sure we're set up retrograde for this final burn to blow the last of the fuel that we've got in the tanks. And I'm going to extend the landing gear. I can't actually remember whether the landing gear actually affect on atmosphere, but I'm going to deploy them anyway, just to make sure I've got the maximum amount of drag possible as we're going into the atmosphere. And at least for the first part of the aero braking maneuver, I'm going to leave the transfer module attached to the command pod and let it take the brunt of the heat of re-entry before jettisoning the command pod. And we're now in the atmosphere, re-entry is started, firing the retro burn. That is it, we are now out of fuel, so at this point we are now passengers on board. I'm actually surprised the legs haven't broken off yet, but it's time to jettison away from the pod. That is pretty. I do like this lighting effects mod, I actually only just added this one to my list, it looks really great, the particle effects as well. I'm really glad I installed this mod, that's really pretty. The, uh, the transfer stage still disintegrating in the upper atmosphere. We're obviously decelerating quite a bit faster as we're a bit lighter and we're a bit deeper into the atmosphere and we seem to be slowing down. And there we have it. At this point we're still too fast to deploy the parachute, but we are definitely not going to be leaving the atmosphere at this point now. We're down to 19 kilometers in and we're still slowing down. Parachute deployment will be at about 8 kilometers. Jebediah makes it home. And thankfully we managed to pull it off without forgetting to pull the science out of the transfer module in order to be able to bring it back to Kerbin. Because I'm going to tell you now, it wouldn't be the first time that I've uh, detached the transfer stage and realized that I had left a little something that I kind of wanted on board. Unfortunately once again we've come in on the night side but nevertheless we can see the parachute deployed and Jebediah makes it home so a successful return from the surface of the Mun. Not in ideal conditions, I will try and plan it a little bit better next time to place my landing zone in a position on the Mun that is not going to run out of sunlight at some point during the mission itself. And we've of course got a ScanSat and communication satellite now in orbit of the Mun as well, so it will slowly be mapping away. So, the next episode, I'm going to start putting the first modules in orbit and docking them together to make the core of the space station. It will likely be unmanned for this initial part, there are still pieces that I need to get. However, this return from the Mun should give me the science I need to get most of those. And taking a quick look at our communications network as it currently stands, I think it's about time we extended our reach out to Minmus. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will catch you all next time.